Hey everyone, welcome to our garden. Uh, give you a quick tour before it's summer and everything burns up. Let's go. So poolside we have a Meyer lemon tree. Uh, it's starting to bloom. We got some lemons from the previous crop and then we also got a Pokemon. There's Max. On the other side we have what I call Hibiscus Alley. Planted a ton over the last summer. Uh, but we also got Bougainvillea, Nasturtium. That's a hard one to say. That's edible. And then we have some jasmine that's crawling all up. Got a hummingbird feeder. We had a baby hummingbirds earlier. Down here we have some more hibiscus since we do love the tropics, love Hawaii. These are the ones that have kind of survived. More bougainvillea, rock trumpet. These are green-eyed lady abutilon. You can see the green eyes. And then got nectarines here. Uh, they look pretty good. Maybe a few more weeks, it'll be good to eat. So this one here is a multi-grafted plum tree. I bought it because Max City loves plums, apparently. And it has five different varieties on it, fused together. And only got three plums and sadly, they all fell. So there's one. <laughs> but better luck next time. Down here we have raspberry. Tiny little bushes, raspberry and blackberry. Lime tree bunch of flowers, little baby guava, almond tree, tiny almonds to be. This one's a cherry tree with three varieties on it, but no cherry trees yet. And the peach tree with five different varieties on it. And it's starting to turn in colors, it's ripening. This one's cool, the fact that I'm getting apples at all. And this one has three varieties on it. Let's see if it actually uh, ripens and becomes edible. And now over here, we have a dead tree. <laughs> but these are called uh, Forgetful Night Spur. Apparently they're very poisonous and they're a product of me planting a bunch of uh, seeds over the last half year and seeing what happens but we also have a wisteria climbing up and that's the goal a random rose bush and another wisteria on the right that's where max lives <laughs> uh, it's i guess it was a former playhouse but now it's just my gardening shed and i planted two different cherry trees one on the left and one on the right but it's their first year, so I doubt we'll get anything. So just to the right of the playhouse, I have this little makeshift greenhouse that I set up during the winter since it was so cold and raining and a lot of my plants were suffering. And then I was moving stuff around this cart and now uh, my plants just kind of live here. <laughs> it's not always great, but I do my best. And you continue to the to this area over here. On the left, we have a tangerine tree. They're tasty. This grapevine that's kind of covered up. I chopped it all down and all grew back recently. And we think that's an orange tree. And then, but poor butylons. They kind of suffered recently. I had to chop them back because they had withered away. And I do have this blueberry bush that somehow has survived. I have more beautiful ones back there. I love them. A gooseberry tree in the distance. Not a tree, a bush. And little baby fig plants. Rose bush. A wisteria tree. So leaving the spa area. The pool area in the distance. That's Max's office back there. And back to the tree. And then, oh. That's where Max sometimes sits. He's being lazy. <laughs>
So to left of the swing, we have the more shaded area. I planted some angel trumpet, which I really enjoy. The fragrance is really nice, and at night it's even more fragrant, but it turns out it's also very poisonous. I have some more camellia and some herbs, lots of rue, and more camellia, and some roses. Then all around, we have some white jasmine that's almost ready to bloom. And then this beautiful fountain that Max uh, had ordered while he was in Morocco was made there. He had it delivered, but turns out the socket is not the right one. So he needs to get that fixed. <laughs> and then Max's office is just right in there. And you can kind of see his monitor, whatever he's working on. <laughs> oh, look. And then while Jamie appears. Hey, buddy. Say hi to your friends. Hi, Dad, he says. Oh, look, he's waving. He missed us. We just got back from the book tour. Bye, buddy. <laughs> So over here, I have my little dwarf nectarine tree. Uh, it's gonna give me little baby nectarines if the squirrels don't get them. So that's kind of exciting. And yeah, so this is my little fruit tree section. Uh, what's exciting about these is that they're all varieties that have or require low chill hours, which means they, on, they only need a few hours of temperatures under 45 degrees. A lot of these fruit trees, except for citrus, require in order to start budding out, leafing out eventually. If you go to Home Depot, you'll find trees that aren't actually ideal to your area specifically. Like, they'll just sell whatever they have on stock. So it's maybe best if you hit your local nursery where you can uh, actually find something that will grow in your area, potentially. So... Let's see how long this lasts. Summer is kind of rough in, the, in my area, but uh, yeah, this is the space. Let's get decent shade, nice place to hang out with friends, and it's my happy place. And of course, it always has Pokemon. A little Lapras. Uh oh. I put a magic corp. Oh yeah, let's go right back there. And now we're in the front yard. So I planted a bunch of roses, most of them David Austin roses. They are just English roses that tend to be multi-petaled. And I actually thought they were peonies. I first saw one at the Getty Villa. Um, but I was corrected. This one here is Scepter Dial, and that's the first one I ever saw. But I do have a few that are not David Austin, just based on smell. That one's called a Double Delight. The fragrance is noted as spicy, but whatever it is, it smells fantastic. And what's cool about the David Austin roses, most of them are named after uh, Shakespeare or famous English people. So that's pretty fun. So on this side of the yard, these are the old roses that were already here when we first moved in. But back in January, in winter, I removed all the leaves, pruned back, and fed the roses. It's, uh, it's good for the plants. It's always summer here in California, honestly, and the roses need a little rest, and they reward me with a lot of blooms. Since then, though, I've planted more of the David Austin roses. Um, and then Max got me these custom signs that his friend, his friend Drake makes, one of his followers. They're pretty cool. Just because I bought over 40 varieties now, so keeping track. Also trying to keep the fungus this has been a bit of a pain, but I'm um, enjoying it so far. Most of my roses are uh, pink roses, but I did get some yellows and some oranges. Look at that. It smells fantastic. And 
more to come. And over here we have a standard, which is just a rose in a tree form or tree shape. I bought a few. Take a little Mr. Gnome. Uh, they go kind of crazy sometimes though. And got a little topiary. It needs a little tidying up. Between me and the gardener, we do a decent job. And yeah, that's the garden right now. I almost forgot. I do have my inside garden, which is part of the arrow garden. It's a bit of a mess. This tomato plant has kind of taken control and I really should have removed it, but I was kind of hopeful that it would give me tomatoes. I just don't know if it will, but there are flowers there. So who knows? And then there's also this weird thing. So it's hard to say, but I'm trying. And then of course, as most people know, the massive collection and it's growing. Plus, some plushies thrown from our tour and other fun ones that will probably make its debut in upcoming episodes. Huzzah. Happy to talk for gardening. Just leave a message in the comments or on Instagram. And next video, we'll be talking about the book tour and all the exciting things that happened and all the cool gifts we got and all the people we met. So, thanks for watching.